didn't use it to. <laughs> I pulled up my stockings. I and this popped my your garter, garter on. Yes. And who, everything. Who knew that that's where this was going to go? And Kay then does some, not. And then some people are correct not to like spicy food. <laughs> to be fair, I'm not as spicy as I used to be. Oh, you. Oh. <laughs> I have no comment for that. I, I take that as a positive. <laughs> A, a good speed, okay. and I was getting off as, as as many as I could. So you know. <laughs> I mean, famously, so, famously, I would nick God stitching the round for the much hated hat by Dan, which is the Ricky hat. The Ricky hat. <sighs> What's wrong with you, woman? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ricky. <laughs> Ricky. Um, um, I love that hat and I really want to make another. I can't find my Ricky hat. Yeah, I burnt it. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the Bakery Bears video show featuring the exciting conclusion of Knit or Forfeit. Who's gonna win? Yes, last time our quiz show returned with the added excitement of a speed round. Yes. And Kay absolutely mastered it. She ended up with a stupendous score of 18 points. And today we find out, it's an annual tradition, we find out who is going to be the champion of 2022. Yes. Last year, I wrestled the crown from her head. And this year, I have been enjoying its majesty yes. all year long. Who's going to wear it? So yes, it is a December tradition and it's one of our favourites. It's been marvellous seeing the return of Knit or Forfeit. Yes. Oh yes. And speaking of December... It is December now. You Can know you what that? that means? It means I've got my sparkly Christmas tree jumper on. It also means the Bakery Bears Advent Calendar is back. Yes. It has begun. Oh my goodness. Can you believe it? Now, in a shocking move... This year, in the process of editing the said advent calendar, uh -huh. certain things sprung out at me. <laughs> and you know how the show just begun, and you saw some outtakes from today's show. Well, in the process of editing the advent calendar, certain outtakes presented themselves, yeah. and I thought perhaps people might like to see them. Well, I wasn't sure, so I showed it to Kay, and Kay was like, oh, that's lovely. It's really lovely. funny. It's funny, but also, we show you one or two of the things which are coming up in this year's Advent Calendar, but also, most exciting of all, and we shared this actually, we showed it to our Baker Bear patrons in our yeah. Baker Bear's Advent Calendar launch show, which happened just Sunday, just gone, and they absolutely loved it, because we've got some new music. Yes. If you're talking the, sort of the, the hallmark scenes where someone's maybe rushing to get to someone because yes. there's been a misunderstanding and oh, they have to go tell them. Always a misunderstanding, isn't that? Always. Yes, yes. So look, would you like to see some outtakes? It's only short. It's just one minute, 20 seconds, but you get to hear some lovely music and you get to see Kay make a bit of a fool of herself. Let's have a look. It's not good, is it, when you eat something and... I feel like I should have four legs and be woofing. You taste, you taste it five minutes later. I can say that without laughing. I can do it, I can do it. Okay. He had no further... <laughs> no, right, no, I can do it. No, don't look at me. Okay. Uh, Yes, it what, really made me What chuckle. do you think the word was that I couldn't say? I'm not going to tell you. Know, we don't want people commenting in the show notes. It could get... 
No, not going to tell you. You'll have to watch to find out. And I think I worked it out. I think you'll find out on about day 21. Right. Because that's the that's the point. So where you'll, you'll have to have an no, no, eagle no, no. ear. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. That's what you did. Did I, could, did I manage to say the tricky word? You will notice when you see... Well, no, because no one will really know, but... No. Just know, if you can't see Kay's face, if I've put up lovely images of Christmas, <laughs> perhaps there might be a reason for that. <laughs> Who knows or dares to dream? Because my face was so red because I was laughing so much. Yes. Now, look, the other great thing about this time of year is it tends to be the sort of... And I bet this happens in lots of houses. People try out food, you know, that perhaps we're going to have on the big day. Mm. Or at some point over the Christmas period. I remember my mum, especially, she used to... I probably told you this before, but she... I remember so vividly one Christmas she gave me... How, how amazing is this? She gave me Delia's Christmas and said... Go through it and asterisk things that you like. And it's still at your mum's, that list. And it's that still list. got my... That list is still at Dan's mum's. We found it one time. And she, she made it all. I mean, how amazing is that? Now, I'm so lucky because Kay also tends to try things out at this time of year. Yeah. And it's not necessarily for the big day. No. Because but... it's for our big day. Yes, our Christmas special yeah. and the return of Kay's Handmade Christmas. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you what she tried out, no. but all I'll tell you is this. She brought me a bit and there was none left two hours later. Dan virtually ate the whole thing. And when you see it, you'll be like, oh, I mean, I had some as well. It's delicious. Let me tell you, you know that we have dicky tummies. Yeah. <laughs> so if we could eat it, and have no issues. Yeah. That means you can too, baby. It's delicious. And it's something that... Everybody can eat. That everybody... Yeah, everybody can you. eat. And, yeah, I mean, I've adapted it slightly. Just very, very slightly. You didn't need to do that. Um, but it, it's so delicious. And probably not what you're expecting me to make. That's all I will say. It's going to be the centrepiece of our next show, our yeah. Christmas special, yeah. with the return for a one-off, super-duper festive special of Kay's Handmade Christmas. Yes. Kay in the wild, yes, we'll have some of that, please. Yes, we're out in the wild, <laughs> yes. doing something that we... Yes. Oh, no, that sounds wrong, doesn't it? <laughs> but we are, yes, out in the wild. Yeah. It's going to be tremendous, I absolutely assure you. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's very exciting. Very exciting. Are you looking forward to it? I am. I'm... I'm, I'm but... <sighs> I'm sort of more confident than I was because yes. I've practiced this said thing. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but there's there's more than one thing there that is. we're going to show. Because it's Kate's Handmade Christmas. Yeah. I'm really excited because both things are probably not, like, not what you're expecting me to, to make. Well, what's so lovely about this special edition of Kate's Handmade Christmas is you're taking elements of what you did last year. Yeah. And you're also bringing in elements of what you did the year before. Yes. Yes. Are you yes. with me? Yes. yes. So it's going to be an amazing show. So don't miss that next time. But speaking of exciting things, <gasps> new sock pattern release. Oh, yes. The rumple socks. The rumple socks. And I can see them. The pattern is out. C can we see them? Yeah, you can see them. This is the pair that I originally knitted. Now, Bryony has worn these several times. Disgraceful. So they are looking a little bit scratchy around, <laughs> around the heels. But these are the rumple socks. Woohoo! Now, I've got. I've also got another pair to show you, and I'll be showing you those in What's On My Needles. Superb. I've started a new pair, and they're just so beautiful. But I also knit a pair of these for Dan, if you remember. Yes, you yes. probably remember. It was in some hand-dyed yarn that Almost I dyed quite myself. A lot, so. Yeah. yeah, so I've already knit two pairs of rumple socks and I'm now knitting a third. But yeah, the pattern is now out, so you can purchase the rumple socks on Lovecrafts and on Ravelry, of course. Now, it is rumple, not rumpled, with a D on the end. I have seen a couple of people say, oh, I'm really excited for the rumpled socks. It's rumple, as in rumple stilt skin, because that's the inspiration. From Once Upon a Time, the lovely Rumpel, and his nickname kind of was Rumpel, that's what Belle called him. She called him Rumpel. So it's the Rumpel socks, and it's a beautiful textured pattern. 
very unisex. I've seen a lot of people really excited for this because it's a sock pattern they can knit for the, the men in their life as well as for themselves. So it's extremely unisex. And there's also within the pattern, so there's three sizes as normal, but there's also two heel options. There's a standard heel flap and gusset, and then there's also my butterfly heel, which is what this now looking a bit raggedy <laughs> heel is. So this is a mock short row heel that is knit as you knit the sock. So it's not an afterthought heel, it's knit as you go. So yeah, the Rumpel socks are now out and per perfect for Christmas because yes. once upon a time fairy tales, that is kind of, it feels sort of festive to me. Yeah. And so if you're a fan of the show as well, like me and Bryony are, then, you know, you, I'll show you the version that I've come up with this time. It's really fun to add that extra little bit of fairy tale-ness into them. So, yeah, very excited. The one thing I love, actually, as well about this time of year, spoken about the lovely food, but also as well, are oh, the mornings are marvellous. And also the afternoons. And actually, through the day's not bad either. That's all, all the time. Now. I like winter. <laughs> I feel at home. In it has winter. been really cold actually the past few days. The temperature and dark has, has really dropped. And I know some people struggle with the dark, so I'm I'm sorry about you know you if you struggle with the dark. Yeah. You know it, it can be. It can be a really difficult time of year. Thankfully, yeah, we don't. And you know I enjoy nothing more than going for. I mean, to be honest, this morning I went for all in the dark, and it was still dark when I got back. Yeah, it was and for the first time it's very, ever. It's very gloomy today. It takes a while to get used to it. You know, for your eyes to get used yeah. to it. And what I've learned over the years is it's actually better not to have artificial light. Because if you do, you can see where the artificial light is, but you can't see outside of the yeah, artificial yeah. light. You see a lot of people wearing head torches, don't you? But you don't do that, do you? Because all you can see, I've yeah. got one, I've tried it. All you can see is where the light's pointing because your eyes are just to that. Yeah. And outside it's like pitch black. At least if I go running in the dark. Your eyes adjust. My eyes adjust and yeah. I can pretty much see everything. There's only been once where I remember running into the woods. And, it was and totally I literally, pitch black. like, as if <laughs> it was like, oh no, this is a disaster. And I think I gave up and came out and, and ran on the roads. But it's so tricky at this time of year because mm. we're very lucky where we live in that I can go running through lit streets, but then also if it's icy, I can get off road mm. and, and go mm. through the woods. Mm. But, you know, when it's dark... It can be just as treacherous. Mm, mm. Look, Absolutely. There's too many lovely things to there see is, today. It's is. very exciting. Oh, I've got a new cast on. Yeah, I've got three new cast ons. Well, I nearly had two new cast ons, but I just thought you would explode if there was five <laughs> new cast ons in one episode. I thought it would be too much for you to deal with. So you'll get another new cast on from me next time. Right now, though, I think we should see. Are you showing one of your new cast ons first? Well, well, you must be. I must You're only be. three projects. Because I've got three projects and they're all new. <laughs> I'm a fool. In that case, I'll shut up and ask Kate Jones, what's on your needles? So, right, the first thing. Yes, yes. Um, and the third thing that I'm going to show you are Advent projects. Okay, cool. D what did you think I was going to say then? Well, I don't know, but that's oh, funny right. when you said the first, this is the first thing and the third thing. <laughs> I just wasn't sure. What is it? So the first thing is a pair of socks. Cool. Now I've actually got two projects in this bag. I'll explain why when I get to the third one. But let me just pull out the first project. Okay, so here is the first one. It's a pair of socks. And these are some advent socks. So I've actually got three advent calendars this year. I've got one that I made myself, a yarn advent calendar, and that's the one that I'm going to be talking about now. I've also got one from Pixie Yarn, and I've also got a like a stitch markery type advent calendar from um, Fripp and Bib. It's Frippery and Bibbalots in the UK, and that's I'm loving that. That's fantastic. But this one I'm going to talk about now is my own hand-dyed yarn advent calendar. So what I decided to do in, I think, probably January of this year is that every time I did some dyeing, I would dye up a few minis and I would create my own yarn advent calendar. And I also dyed up an identical set for my friend, so she's opening it along with me. And the theme, I can tell you all now, because I've started it and my friend will have started it and she's opened day one. Can I guess? Well, it's, it's themed on my one of my favourite books. 
Okay. So can you guess? I'm going to reach behind you and grab the book in a minute. So, so it's anybody, themed oh, you can't on one s- of your favourite books. It's themed on one of my favourite books. Is uh, it Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> Do you know, I did I did have a peek at that one time. I think I just got a sample on my Kindle or something, just because I was curious <sighs> years ago. I mean, it, obviously there's a reason people read it, but the writing itself I thought was pretty bad, I've got yeah, to say. Yeah. The quality of the writing Just so we're wasn't clear, good. that was a joke. That was a joke. I have not read yes. or watched. Yes. You know, I've read a tiny bit of the book, so yes. I was just curious, and yes. I immediately put it down. But I have not seen the films, so I have not read the books, so I'm not interested. So, yes, joke. Joking aside, I'm going to reach behind Dan and grab the book that my advent calendar is themed on. And, of course, it Whoa. is <laughs> The Wonderful Winter Solstice by Rosamund Pilcher. Now you're talking. Now, this edition, you can see it's a hardback. I decided, I've had a couple of softback editions of this over the years, but these days I read it on my Kindle. So I didn't actually have a hard copy of the book. And I thought, oh, I really want to have the the physical book. I don't keep a lot of books these days because I don't like clutter. And I see, you know, this is by no means... You know, this is just me. I know lots of people like to have loads of books. You know, look, look, when it comes down to it, I think you're right. It, 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 the only books that you should have are ones you're going to read, read again. again. And I say, I, I mean, that's just how I feel about yes. it. I just think if I'm not going to read that book again, then someone else might as well have it who is going to read it. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. I, I just see it as a sort of waste. And Brian, I will encourage Bryony every sort of six months maybe to clear out the books that she doesn't want to read again. She did that recently and we got like 20 books which went to the charity shop, so that was really good. But yeah, I decided that I did want to have a hard copy of this book, so I went looking for a first edition. And this book is only 22 years old. It was written in 2000. So it's not like it's a really old book or anything. But I did manage to find a first edition. So this, you know, th- this is the original hardback because when a book comes out, it usually comes out in hardback first, doesn't it? And then it comes out in paperback. So this is like, I love the original cover. This is Oscar and Elfrida. And this is Horace, their dog. So that's really lovely. And I love having this hard, hardback book. So that's what my advent calendar is themed on. And what I did was I dyed yarns to not match exactly, but that are inspired by certain paragraphs or phrases or whatever in the book. So because it's now, today's the second, so I've opened the first already and I've knit the first into two projects and that's the other one I'm going to show you in a little bit. So the first one is a pair of socks and I've knit the cuff, so I'll show you that first and you can see the colour of the yarn. Oh, it's lovely. So here it is. It's pinky. Pinks and sort of little dashes of purple and all of these are sparkly, that might not be coming out, but they are all sparkly. And this is what I've got left of the first 20 gram mini. Hang on, let me just... So that's what I've got left, which is probably, I'm guessing, maybe about 7 grams or so. And you can see the sparkle. There we go. I have to compliment you on your holding of the yarn. Thank you very much. You normally allow the... the, Look, I'm doing my best. You're doing tremendously well. Normally she lets the, the, the wool touch the microphone and then it scratches so, off and I have so to edit many, it out. So many things I have to remember. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think credit where credit's due. That was tremendous. Oh, thank you. So, yeah, I've knit the cuff. Now, what I did for these socks is I wanted to use 24 of the minis. There's actually 25 minis in the set, but th- this will use... 24, I think that's how I did it. I can't quite remember, but in any case, basically what I'm gonna do is use half of the minis for one sock and half for the other sock. Oh, I know what I did, I know what I did. To make sure I use all 25, the first 12 minis will take me down to the toe, the second 12 minis will take me down to the toe of the second sock, and day 25 is for both toes. That's what I did. So yeah, we've got the cuff done first, and I've done a one-by-one rib. I'm 
can I just tell you, I'm currently obsessed with knitting one by one rib. I don't know what is going on. All I want to do is knit one by one rib. I know you're all probably going, what? Are you bonkers? Do you know what it is? I think for me, a one by one rib, it's got a much better rhythm working it than a two by two. I would agree. Because you go in, you know, one oh, stitch agree. forward, one stitch back, one stitch forward, yeah, one yeah. stitch back. And I found myself going into like a little one by one rib trance. You know, it was, I just was, it was so relaxing. I was just loving it so much and I didn't want to stop knitting one by one rib. So every sock that I've done recently <laughs> where I can. I can't think I've of the last doing... time I did two by two. Oh, I mean, I, I have on my... My other yeah, pair yeah. of rumples are a two by two, but I'll show you yeah. those later. So this is my first colour, and isn't it pretty? Now, the first colour, will, I will tell you what it's called, but what I'm going to be doing is, every day I'm going to post my yarn and the name in our Facebook group, in our patron Facebook group. So if you know the book, or even if you don't, you know, you can see what my colours are each day and what they're called. I thought that might be quite fun. So the first day, which is that lovely pink and sort of purpley, is called Elaborate and Beautiful Cushions. And it's funny, I'm saying this to Bryony, I'm gonna say every morning, because I've read the book to Bryony a couple of times now, so she knows it really well. And I'm gonna say, Do you, what's this bit from? And I said the first one yesterday, and she's like, yeah, that's what it is. It's because Elfrida, the, the main character, she's got a little part-time job stitching elaborate and beautiful cushions for an interior design company. So that's where the name of day one comes from. And I thought it would be fun, seeing as it's now the second, to open day two together. So my advent, I just put them into little plain brown bags. My friend's was much prettier. <laughs> But my, mine are just in little brown bags. So I'm going to open it and we'll see what day two is. And I've written it underneath. Isn't it amazing that you're able to open day two on? I know. Two and not early, you know, because it doesn't take any work at all to actually film and publish the show. This is on the second, isn't it? <laughs> Dan's just ruined it, ruined it. It's the 2nd. For you, everyone, is the 2nd of December, is it not? I'm not breaking any rules opening this on the 2nd. When you are watching, it's the 2nd. That's all I am saying. So today's colourway name is A Sky of Deep Sapphire Blue. Now this, this quote is from when Elfrida... Uh, befriends, she lives in this little village in the south of England and she befriends Oscar and at the time, early on in the book, Oscar is married and he lives in this big house and she goes for dinner one night and he, he, Oscar takes her on a tour of the garden and the sky was deep sapphire blue. So this colour I'm expecting to be blue and it is a blue. Oh, Ooh, it's lovely. It's blue with sort of flecks of gold in it. It's really pretty. Oh, isn't that lovely? So that's my next colour. Oh, how exciting. So I'm going to get this wound today and I'm going to knit. I think I worked out I need to knit something like 11 rounds per colour on the sock. I can't remember exactly. I've got it written down. So I'll be knitting that next. Oh, look. And when I dyed this advent calendar, I really wanted it to be full of colour. You know, there are some more subdued ones in there. There are some more sort of delicately speckled and there are a couple of deeper colours as well. But I didn't want it to be like pale and pastely and, del you know, too... You know, I wanted some colour because this time of year... It's dark, isn't it, as we've already said, and it can be quite gloomy. So I just wanted it to be a really fun and pretty thing to open every day for me and for my friend as well. So that's going to be the next one. A sky of deep sapphire blue. How lovely. And it's so nice because I've read the book so many times. I know exactly the bit that it's from in the book. So it kind of transports me back to reading it as well, which is really nice. So I'm really enjoying, you know, I've, I've knit the rib, that's all I've done, one by one rib. 
but I really really loved it and I knit this in no time at all. I think th this is the fun you know with with advent projects for me I, I, this year I just didn't want anything that was going to take too much time um, you know and was too much of a commitment. I just wanted to have maybe an hour or so of opening the little parcel and just sitting down and either putting on a hallmark or listening to a Christmas book or whatever and just having a really nice little bit of time doing it but not so that I felt pressurised you know oh, I've got to get through this bit because I've got to open my next one today I didn't want that kind of a feeling and this will be perfect and I do have another one but that's equally as lovely and you know not not too much of an obligation each day so really loving that so that's oh advent socks and I've called these the Elfrida socks because Elfrida is an icon as Bryony said she's an icon she's fabulous I absolutely love Elfrida and the other reason I wanted these to be on the brighter side is because she is a very bright sort of character you know, she's quite in your face. She used to be an actress on the, you know, on the stage and she's very flamboyant, a bit flamboyant and uh, very gregarious. So I wanted the, to reflect that as well. So Dan Jones, what's on your needles? Oh, you are on form today. I what's believe... on my needles? Yes. Well, uh, I've finished the colour work on this. Oh, look at that. It's all pink and black, brown. What colour is that? It's a really dark brown. Oh yes, sorry. Yeah. Pink and brown and creamy. And so I'm right at the point now where it, 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 I'm going to have to put needles on, no, stitches on hold. Oh right, and okay. And start knitting the front and start knitting the back. We need to measure it though, don't we? We do, To we see do. if it's long enough. And I'm going to get my other tank top, do you know the Advent one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And measure it against that just yes. to make sure. Yes. Because, yeah, I mean, obviously the beauty of it is I can knit it yeah, whatever length yeah. you need it to I, be. I don't want it to be super long. I do want it because I'm going to wear a white shirt underneath well, it. Well, I'm probably so. close then. You probably are, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, about halfway to the end of that round and then away we go. So we'll measure so it's it. With, uh, we'll the lovely Let Lopey. All the colour work sections, as I say, are finished and they look fairly even, which is okay. It's beautiful. I love it. And it's just plain now at the top. Yeah. So the interesting thing for me is going to be knitting flat. But I've done this before because I did it on the Samantha and I've done it on something else too. So it's knitting flat with the shaping and then yeah, three needle watch bind you, off watch probably on the top. Watch your gauge a little bit when you change to flat. Yeah, well, I've already sort of... I've been doing flat in between... Oh, no, no you, you mean haven't. flat. Yeah. So, oh, no, that's going to be tricky. I'd not thought of that because it's a long time since I've done that. So what do I need to do? Do I need to make sure that my pearl is not loose? Yes. Right. You just, because people tend to, generally speaking, people tend to knit knit stitches differently to pearl stitches in terms of their gauge. Right. I think with practice, you, you know, you could probably get, I think you've just, as long as you're aware of it. Yeah. Then... I think I'm sure you'll be absolutely fine and like I said you have done it before you have don't loosely pearl and we'll be golden yeah I mean just try and pearl at the same gauge that you knit I know yeah. that's really difficult isn't it because it's a different way it's a different technique yeah um, well so. I mean I'll most definitely I, I feel uh, sort of okay with with that yeah but you know we'll I, wait and see I think generally you you knit tighter than you pearl I think that is what people would find normally but of course everybody's different so you know you might be totally fine transferring from one to the other so it's gone great all her patterns are really good the patterns are linked in the show notes below it's the stacker and I've knit lots of her patterns and I always find them really really clear to be honest mm. I mean I think the only one that was slightly challenging I think was a free pattern one, I'm sure one of them was a free pattern. It might have been the anniversary. No, or... no, the um, Rajari is a free pattern, I think. No, it isn't. Is it not? See, I thought one of the... I, I was sure one of the... I think the anniversary was a free pattern. Because I thought that was in a book. But, I, but I think it was released. Oh, right. I can't okay. remember. Oh, I'm not sure. I think it's called the anniversary because it was the anniversary oh, of something. Oh, right, okay. And it was... I'm not sure. But I know on the chart on that, I did have one or two challenges actually mm -hmm. on the chart but once I'd sort of worked out what, what the score was it was okay but it, it, I, I love these and I'm now at the interesting point where I'm about to finish the Alexander yes so I'll have that 
off next time. I was just thinking, yeah. actually, my off your needles. There's one last time, there's one this time, and, and there'll be, be one, one next yeah. time. And they're like buses. None well, of them none that, of them come, do they? And then three come at once. That's kind of what happens, though, when you don't finish things very often. You will get to a point when suddenly you've probably got, like, Loads a lot. Loads of the needles. Which yeah. is a very good time of year to be finishing things, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's true. Definitely true. Yeah. So the challenge now for me is what do I do next? Because, yes, I've started the fingering weight one, but I need a thicker one as well. Right. Do so you? Oh, you do? Right, okay. Just for me and my knitting projects. Right, okay. Because I normally have two jumpers on the go. But obviously, I won't start that probably till I finish this. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Well, that's the thicker one, isn't it? Well, it so is, but got... I may start. So I'm not sure. I'll have right, to have a think. Okay. Maybe I'll do another one for me. Well, why not? Who knows? You wear them, so... I do. Yeah, I mean, why not? Definitely. Why not? I wore them, actually, the other day on a radio show. Yeah, you did. And it was brilliant. It was a really sort of bleak day it was chucking it down wasn't Windy. it was that when it was yeah. really raining really bad a real yeah. sort of bleak day and it was superb mm. i mean they are stupendous mm. in weather like that but yeah that's lovely stacker and it'll be interesting to see what happens now when i start knitting flat what else is on your needles okay so the next thing is another pair of rumpel socks yeah. I really had an urge to cast on another pair of rumpel socks because this this pattern it's just, it's got a really addictive quality to it, which shows in the fact that this is now my third pair that I will have knitted. And generally speaking, I, you know, there are a few patterns where I do do them again and again. But this this one in particular, I just thought, oh yeah, you know, I just enjoyed knitting them so much that I wanted to cast on another pair. So this pair, I decided to associate it even more with Once Upon a Time by using yarn that was inspired by a, a, another character in the show. So these ones are called my Snow White Rumples because Snow White is obviously in the show and she's a very major character in the show. And to do this, I thought, right, I, you know, I need some white yarn, don't I? Because I'm, I wanted to, I thought, oh yeah, can you imagine a white pair of rumples? They'll just be the most beautiful things. And that's what I'm doing. Now, it took me a little bit to decide what yarn to use because, you know, it's just a plain creamy white yarn. It's not pure white, it's more of a cream, I would say. And in the end, I did, I did pull out a skein of Cascade Heritage because I've got a couple of skeins in the snow colourway. That would have been perfect. And I did actually cast on using that. And it would have been perfectly lovely. But I, I know, the thing that I kept thinking was, oh, I know that the, the yarn that I dye on is just a bit plumper than Cascade Fingering. And I have used, uh, not Cascade Fingering, Cascade Heritage. It's just a bit plumper, the yarn that I dye on. So I thought, do you know what? I'm going to see if I've got an undyed skein in my stash. And I did, luckily, have an undyed skein. And that's what I'm using. So it's... The, it's an 85-15, so 85 superwash merino, 15 nylon. And it's just a lovely, soft, plump yarn. It's gorgeous. And then I wanted to add in a bit more, sort of, of the snow character by choosing a different colour for the heel. Now, in, if, if you've watched the show, then you will know that she wears, quite famously, she wears a particular hat quite a lot. There's quite a lot of what look like hand knits in Once Upon a Time. What was that? So, so I dropped my yarn. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I didn't Done know to warn you. Then I just thought, I'll just go get me. it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's quite a lot of... I think they do look like hand knits in the show. And Snow wears a hat quite a lot which is this really gorgeous soft blue she also wears a coat that is a really beautiful shade of blue as well so oh I'm going to look through my stash and see if I've got a really pale shade of blue and I did so I'm knitting the heel in the blue but here's where I'm up to and I put my stitch marker is a heart because again it, it, you'll know from the show that hearts play a very huge part once upon a time it's kind of ridiculous what happens to people's hearts it is totally ridiculous but fun 
So yeah, here we go. Let me just arrange myself. And look how beautiful. Wow. How gorgeous it, does it look? That sort of looks, it reminds me of. It's so pretty and there's my heel that's coming in now. So it just makes me think it's like proper old fashioned knitting. Isn't it gorgeous? I think my gran used to really enjoy knitting in white. Yeah. I think mean, that's why I'm thinking. I, I've never knit a pair of socks in, in white or cream. It is more of a cream than pure white, I would say. And I'm absolutely loving it. It It's just, it, it's all about, I mean, the yarn's lovely, you know, and I'm so much happier now I'm using this base. But really, it's all about the stitch pattern with this, and it's just gorgeous. So in this pair, I am putting in a heel flap and a turn because like I said, that is a, an option within the pattern. You can do either of the heels. And there's also in the pattern, there is a video tutorial for how to work the butterfly heel. There's full written instructions, but I did also include a video for the butterfly heel because it could be it's a new technique to you. But for this pair, I've gone for the heel flap and turn. And I just, oh, I just love the combination of the cream and the blue. Isn't it pretty? And the rest of the sock will be cream. I'm not going to do a blue toe, I don't think. I'm just going to leave the heel in the blue, I think. And it's just so lovely. I just love how the stitch pattern looks. And it, it's a super stretchy pattern, this. You can see, you know, the rib here is the 2 by 2 rib, and it doesn't actually bulge out much from the rib, so that's how you can tell it's super stretchy. Can you see? That's brilliant. It's really lovely. And I made these ones longer than I normally do because Bryony's really liking longer socks at the minute. I think because she's wearing either little sort of Converse boots or her... Dr. Do Martins. Doc Martins. Um, but in winter, she does tend to want to wear her longer socks. So this pair and another pair that I've just finished, and I'll show you later, I've done with a longer leg. It's definitely longer than I would normally do. I'm not sure how many rounds it is. So yeah, these are my snow white rumples and I'm just loving them. And I, they, I'm counting this really as kind of a festive knit as well because of the colours. You know, it looks Christmassy, doesn't it? So I'm very much counting this as a festive knit. And what, I, what I've done with the pattern, this, this pattern is specifically for a certain stitch count which fits perfectly into the size medium, which I know is the most common one that people knit anyway. But I wanted to add a small and a large. And I didn't think I'd be able to do that because it is such a specific stitch count. But what I did was I had to play around with the stitch pattern and I, I, I've actually adjusted the stitch pattern to fit the smaller size and to fit the larger size so that it fits exactly within the stitch count and there's no kind of half a repeat and all of that business. I don't really like having to do that. And it's worked out beautifully. I've knit the 72 stitch size for Dan and it looked fantastic. And it, my test knitters have obviously test knit this as well. So I'm happy that it looks great in all three sizes. So there we go, that's my Snow White Rumples. Now if you want to see progress on a sock, forget that. Dan's been knitting. That's this. progress. Dan's been knitting this for about four days. Yeah, I have. Look, it's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know what she's, I genuinely don't know what she's talking about. I mean, just tremendous. This is a new, Kay designed me a pair of socks. I did, I did. And yeah, th these are, and the yarn, if you're wondering what the yarn is, the yarn, it's hand dyed by Kay. It's the always colour. Superb. From the, after all this time, and then always, it's the always. So I've done 15 rounds of ribbing, and I've just started the pattern repeat. You can't tell. Dan wanted um, Dan wanted a pair of socks. He said, oh, I really fancy knitting sort of a cable sort of pair of socks. I said, oh, well, I'll design you a pair if you want, which was lovely because I hadn't really done any any sort of specific designing for quite a while because I've been so embroiled in the advent calendar. It's been a little bit of time. So it was lovely. And I designed you a sock and I got, I've swatched it so I know it works really nicely. And the yarn is just, it's beautiful. It's so, it's so fun. beautiful to It's the work same with. base. It's yeah. the same base yeah. I'm knitting the rumples I mean, with. It's really nice. Perfect. But there I was the other day, I'm, I'm knitting away. And Kay said, so how much ribbing have you done? And I said, 
I've got no idea. I'm just letting the creativity flow. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to punch him. I said, what does that even mean? What sort of answer is that? So you just, this is why Dan's cuffs on his socks end up different lengths, isn't it, obviously? How annoying. There's the yarn look. Isn't it beautiful? We've all been there, folks, haven't we? I was in the zone. I was in the ribbing zone. And is the 15 rounds? Have you counted them? Well, I hope so. Go on, have a count. Shall see I we, count See we get them? to. Because I've done one. But we, what one. I tend to do is... One by one. Oh, yes. yeah, you have started. Oh, you started the pattern, haven't you? So I should still be able to count. Go ahead, I'm counting. Yes. And what I've sort of tend to do now is I tend to knit the rib on the first sock and I do it as close to what I'm supposed to do as I can. I have done 15. 15. Boom! <laughs> And then I just copy it on the second sock, rather than... What do you mean, what do you mean copy it? Well, historically... Do you just guess? Do no. you count? You, no, no, you I do, do count, count the them. rib. I do, but historically what I would do is... Oh, it's all gone wrong. I take it all back. Histori <sighs> historically... <laughs> I wanted you to see his lovely rib. Historically what I would do... I don't do, know why you're doing that. Histori historically what I would do is I would do 15 rounds of rib on the first sock, I'd do 15 rounds of rib on the second sock, but they'd be different. So he didn't do 15 rounds on the second sock, he might have done 18. But I was trying to do 15, whereas How I How can found, you try to do 15? You either do it or you don't. I found if I, if I just compare each rib against each other... Oh, no, disaster. Counting them. No, no. No, no, I don't measure them. Just hold one no, against count, the other. No, I count them. Well, clearly that doesn't work because... Well, so it does times... because the last pair of socks, that's what I did. Right, OK. So, oh, so you've changed to that method now from yes, just guessing before. I wasn't guessing. I was, I was counting them, but maybe I was losing count. I think I was losing count. Oh, dear, 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 dear. I think that was the problem. Because, you know, when you're just doing ribbing, if you're not doing a repeat, I'd sometimes forget if I completed a round. But you can just count them. But I wasn't. I was using uh, the clicker. Right. So okay. I was using the clicker, and then I was... Oh, yeah, 15. The moral of this tale... Is don't use a clicker. <laughs> don't use a clicker. Count your rounds on your rib. Yes, yes. Whereas if you're doing a repeat, I can, you know, I don't get lost on a repeat. So that's really good. So, look, look. It's all written down on here. Shh, don't show Whoa. them. I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm not going to. It's not even typed up. I just The hand. pattern's called Cable and Twist. <laughs> I just... It isn't. I just wrote that at the top. I once wrote a piece of music when I was uh, really young. Um, I was at the Minster, we had to do some competition. Uh, competition? Composition. Composition? Oh, we're so old. We keep getting words wrong all the time. So I wrote a piece of piano music. And I was like writing at the piano. It's a proper Beethoven job. You know, yeah. their grand piano. How lucky was I growing up with a, a Bluthner grand piano? So I had the I had the, the, the music stand laid out flat. So I had the sheet music on there on the top so I was like trying to think and I was like writing it on the wow. top trying a bit more and I got about halfway through it and I was going to come back to do more because it was like homework for school so I put please leave on the top of it and, and put that on the side and I got home from school the next day and my mum said oh I saw that piece of piano music that you'd written on the top and I thought the name was lovely <laughs> bit of a sad song wouldn't I it said, I said no mum that was an instruction <laughs> I didn't want anyone to move it growing up in a house with two brothers and you know also my, my dad was always writing and a musician and so I just thought it's going to get lost and you know I mean to be fair if I'd been sensible I would have just taken it to my room and yeah, left it there but yeah. I was being typically boyish and lazy leaving it on the piano but everyone did leave it mm. they did take it to heart Excellent. I wonder what happened to please leave please leave I don't think it was very good I was never that hot at compositions right we not no no, because, no. I mean, I played trumpet and piano, but I was always so passionately a, a drummer. A player, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the things, Dan, I, I said so that to Kay on uh, one Dan's... of our first or second dates. Yeah. I said, you know, the, the thing that you need to understand about me, Kay, is I'm a player. <laughs> and I, and uh... it's the stupidest thing. I had been a player, and then I met this one. <sighs> you weren't a player, a musician. Oh, right. A okay. player. Right, okay, we're on different wavelengths. We're on completely different but wavelengths. But let me just tell you, right, Dan's been practising every night for months now because you've been 
helping your brother learn to play drums, haven't you? And you've yes. been giving him lessons. And it's, it's inspired Dan to take up practising again. And every single night, without fail, he practises. I go in the shower and you have a practice for like half an hour or whatever. Yeah. And I came out of the shower last night and Dan was playing something from Jesus Christ Superstar. And I, I could, I knew it was. I could, I could, sometimes I can't tell what it is he's playing because all I can hear is the drum. I can't hear the background. And I literally stood there with my hair dripping. I, I thought, I've just got to stand here for a minute and listen to this. He didn't know I was watching. He didn't know I was watching you. And it was just, ama- just amazing. I was like, oh my gosh, that's just fantastic. I wanted to film you, <laughs> but I didn't have my phone. It's really funny. You know, my, the, the biggest gift that my brother's ever given me in my whole life is re- relighting my fire for... For, for, you see, yeah. there's a difference between playing and practicing. I've always played. Yeah. You know, so I've never stopped playing, you know, because I would be doing things for my brother and, you know, I would be sitting down and creating stuff. And so I was always playing, but I have not practiced in years. Because mm. when you practice, you sit down, you look at what you're bad at and you work out what you need to do to get better at that. And since the beginning of the year, that's what I've been doing. And I've been doing it every day. Yeah, every day apart from Sundays during the football season. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. When I watch the football. I have to watch the football. Yeah. And it's the first time in my life I've actually felt like I'm actually starting. I've not practiced like this since I was at college. No. So I've not practiced like this in maybe 25 years. Yeah. And because I'm older and a little bit wiser, I sort of know what I need to do to really get better. And I'm I'm doing mm-hmm. things I couldn't do when I was at college Mm. which is amazing but the thing that I love the most is I have zero aspiration to perform no you're just doing it for yourself which is just such such a fantastic and it's so much more rewarding life lesson isn't it because it's so much more rewarding yeah to do something just for your own progression yeah your own enjoyment your own progression in whatever that thing is it's marvelous it, yeah, and it's such a boost to your confidence, I think, as yeah, well, isn't it? Definitely. You know, so I can tell by your face, you know, when you come away, if, if he's got something right and he's pleased with himself, I can just tell by his face. It's really cool to watch. The, the challenge is to be able to play Rosanna by Toto. Yeah, that's so Probably difficult. Probably one it's of the hardest drum tracks of all time. Really fast, by, really, by a true really genius. fast. He, he, I don't he know took you an do old, it. He took an old-fashioned 60s shuffle and turned it into one of the most iconic rhythms yeah, of all time. Yeah. It's tremendous. What else is on your needles? So the last thing is another Advent project with my Advent yarns that I spoke about before. And, you know, it is amazing. It always amazes me how far a 20 gram mini goes. Do you, do you not think? You know, because I knit the cuff on that sock and I thought, gosh, have I actually used any of this yarn? So I did want to do something else with the advent calendar and initially and right up until yesterday I was going to make another cushion I was going to do an advent cushion I think I spoke about this last time and I have finished that cushion I will show you later it's beautiful so I was going to do an advent cushion and I was all set to do it and then yesterday I just had a change of heart and I I couldn't tell you why exactly But I just suddenly decided, do you know what? Mm, I don't know that I want to do mitered squares right now. And I just thought, what is it I really love? A, wearing and B, knitting. And the answer that is always a cowl with me. And, you know, I've pretty much always got a cowl on the go. It's kind of like, you know, it's sort of like socks for me, knitting a cowl. So I thought, right, I'm going to knit a cowl and I, you know a bit like Dan with the drumming you know I'm purely doing this for my own enjoyment there's no other agenda involved I wanted to do it so I'm doing it and I've, I've sort of designed a little thing because that's the other thing you know so many times and I, I feel sometimes guilty about this that I I tend to, when I'm knitting, I, I tend to want to design something myself and knit that thing rather than knit someone else's designs. You know, there's so many beautiful designs out there, isn't there? And I've knit so many people's designs in the past. But these days, I just, I just really love, you know, I, for example, I could have gone looking for a lovely cowl pattern and there would have been so many out there. But then my heart's telling me, oh, you know, just get out your design book and just see if you can design something that's just for you sort of thing so I did that and 
I don't think you should be uh, feel bad about it. Because imagine, no. if, imagine if John Lennon had just played everyone else's music. Well, I suppose. I or, suppose. If, or if Beethoven had just played Mozart. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you're right. Um, I think it's just because there's so many fantastic designers out there, you know, that that all being said, <laughs> I did just quickly design something for me to knit on the, in this cowl. Just, it's nothing complicated. I wanted something really simple, but that would just bring me some joy. So what I've done is I've taken my obsession with one by one rib <laughs> and I've kind of put that into this a little bit. So I've done the rib. I've started, is it called a rib on a cowl? Mm. I don't know. Well, it must be. It must be a rib, mustn't it? So I've done the bottom rib. And I've, again, what I did was I've worked out, I've gone and looked at one of my cows and I counted how many rounds I've done previously in a cowl and then worked out how many rounds I need to do with each of my colours to get the length that I want. So I've done that, I've done that work already and all I need to do now is, is knit. So I've, I've done the rib and now I haven't, I haven't cut my yarn yet because I think this rib is long enough. I don't want it to be too long because it, you know, it doesn't need to be really long. All it's there to do is to stop the fabric curling basically. So it's served its purpose. But I'm just, I thought, I won't cut it yet. I'm just going to decide if I want to do another repeat. And I, I think it's okay. But this is the sort of little design for the rib that I came up with. It's really pretty, isn't it? My finger's in the way a bit. There you go. But basically what it is, it's a one by one rib. But then I've inserted a garter round in between a couple of rounds of rib. And I think it's really pretty. And it sort of brings to mind, I wanted something that would make me think of winter solstice. And I kind of think of, there's, they refer quite often to, in the, the little town where they moved to in Scotland, there's lots of stone buildings. It's, and it's a soft coloured stone, actually. It's not like a dark coloured stone. And there's lots, there's a stone wall around the house that they live in and they refer to that quite a few times for various reasons. So it kind of made me think of that a little bit, like it could be a stone wall. So I've done, I've done the rib and I've still got, like I said, I've still got that much left. So I'll, I'm gonna obviously keep all these and I'll do something with those afterwards. So I'm all ready now to put in this next one, this lovely blue. So what I'm going, going to do is I've incorporated the one by one rib into it in a very slight way. Nothing very time consuming, but I just wanted to have that echo of the one by one rib sort of moving through the colours. And I'm just loving it. Again, I, knit, I seem to knit this in no time at all. And this took the longest because it's rib and there's more rounds. I think it's 15 rounds here. Whereas the sections I'm knitting each day, I think there's just eight rounds. I think that's what I decided on. So it will be quicker each day. And this will be a very eclectic, colourful piece when it's finished. But I think that's fine for round, round my, my neck in particular because I do like having a bit of colour next to my face. And it all scrunches down, doesn't it? So it's not like you're going to see all of those colours all at once. It'll just be a sort of band of colourfulness around my neck and it'll just be really lovely. The other thing I've changed is normally when I knit cowls I knit them on 3.25 millimetre with fingering weight. I've gone down to a 3 millimetre for this because I really wanted to enhance the ribbiness. You know that that slightly tighter gauge makes you makes the rib sort of stand out a bit more. And it won't affect the width of it that much. It'll be absolutely fine. So yeah, there we go. That's my other advent project. And I suppose it's my Elfrida cowl, although I haven't given it a name. I think I wrote down adv adventing cowl. Is that a word? Adven it's now. Adventing. Oh, that sounds weird when I say it. Adventing. Wonderful. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> right. This, as they say, is it. Every year, we host a very special two-part competition of our knit or forfeit quiz to find out who will be the champion of the current year. Yes. This year is, of course, 2022. And in the first round of the champion of 2022 knit or forfeit quiz, Kay did rather well. She scored 18 points. 
Today is my turn. And by the end of today, we're going to know who's won. So who will win? Let's find out as we enjoy Knit or Forfeit. Yes, it's Knit or Forfeit, the quiz show inspired by knitters. Are we ready with the first knitting question? And we have three lifelines to help us on our way. I will do 50-50. 50-50. And the winner takes hold of this marvellous knitted crown. Have you got stockings on and do trousers? Is that what you're trying to tell me? So, your stockings want to be lovely and flat and smooth. So you would knit every row. Yes, of course he's <laughs> correct. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're back with the exciting conclusion of this year's Knit or Forfeit. Oh yes! Now, what is Knit or Forfeit, you may be wondering. Well, for those of you who didn't see the last round, I shall tell you. Knit or Forfeit is the quiz show inspired by knitters. We have five questions on knitting, and in a huge change, now we have four general knowledge and one speed round. So that's sort of 10 questions in total. Now, last time, the challenger did tremendously well as she scored 18 points and she really mastered that speed round. But we do have some, some help for us along our way as we do the first nine questions. In the first nine questions, we have three lifelines. We have text a friend, we have 50-50, and we have ask the audience. But once we use those lifelines, just like in Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, they're gone. Now, last time, last year, I actually won with the help of Ask the Audience. So it just shows you how powerful those lifelines are. But today, as I've said, it's my round. Because last time, it was, of course, the challengers. And who, who is the challenger? Yes, it's the lovely Kay. Oh my goodness, it's she's me. back. This time, she is in the, the host's chair. Indeed. She shall be asking the questions. Yes. But a, a dramatic change is afoot because, yes, sometimes on this or forfeit, we make mistakes. And it's fair to say that last time I was... Yeah. It's a long time since we've done this, put it, <laughs> put it that way. And, you know, there's lots on my mind at this time of year, like, advocate, look, I'm making excuses. I'm going to get straight to the point. The first question that I asked, I worded it wrong. Right. I should have asked, now you may recall from round one, the first question was, when you're doing a Latvian braid after oh, yeah. the setup round, yeah. what is the next thing that you do? Or, or more specifically, where do you carry your yarns? Yeah. Do you carry them underneath or do you carry them over the top? Now, you answered, you carry them over the top. Uh -huh. And if I'd worded the question right, then that would have been the wrong answer. And in the round... Well, it was the wrong answer, though. Well, let me finish, let me okay. finish telling you. Right. If I had said what I should have said, which is when you are creating a left-leaning Latvian oh, braid... Oh, right, OK. And I neglected to say left-leaning Latvian braid. Right. So a Latvian braid can be worked left-leaning. Yeah, yeah. And if you work it left-leaning, the yarn goes underneath on round two. If you're working it right leaning, then on round two, the yarn goes over the top, and on round three, then you do the opposite and it goes underneath. I hadn't acknowledged that because I've only ever done the right, right, is that, is that correct? Well, I've only ever done it one let's way. Not, let's not confuse the I've issue. I've only ever more. done it one way. <laughs> yes. I'd, I'd also totally forgot that you can do it the other way. Yes. It can face the other way. Because it's yes. like a little arrow, it produces like a little arrow doesn't it? It does, it does indeed. So uh, uh, so technically I wasn't wrong. Technically you weren't wrong. Now it, but I I got it wrong. No you didn't. For for the question that I didn't ask you correctly. No but I presumed that you meant but the way that I'd always knitted it. The thing is that none of that matters because the question I asked you had two right answers. Right okay. and that is your answer, yeah, and, the, yeah, and also yeah, the answer yeah. that I told you was the correct answer. Okay. So there is only one thing that we can do. I think we should call up the scores, and I think a change of, what, what does Dumbledore say in Harry Potter? Change of colours is in order. Does he say that? Yeah, he does, he does. And then he claps like that, and oh look, 
Kay has another point. Well, I had no idea that Dan was going to say all this. You ha he hadn't said before. I thought it would be a nice surprise. Occurred. Did you get a deluge of messages saying... No, no just two. All right, okay. But also... Thank you, two people. Yes. <laughs> I, got an I got another point. So she actually scored 19 points. So all those people at home who were looking and thinking, hold on a minute, that doesn't seem quite right. Y you are in fact correct. And for all those people who don't know Latvian braids, we apologise for leading you down the garden path last episode. And we have now corrected it. Because you can, of course, as we've said, you can make them one way and, and you, you can make, make them, them the, the other, other. So look, cool, isn't it? what's the deal today? You sort of know, knitting questions first five. And then, as last time, this is the time of year we all like to pay trivial pursuits. So to honour that, that great Christmas tradition, that holiday season tradition, we have got five questions based around trivial pursuit for our specific subjects. Pink and yellow. Okay, and that is entertainment, entertainment and history. And history. So I will have two questions on entertainment. One yeah. from... 1991 yeah and one from 2014 yeah and then i will also have the same for history yes yes and then my specialist subject for the speed round is that is the um the old yellow yellow yes so i've gone for history yeah. from 1991 this is very exciting isn't yes. it yes i can't wait for this i have my piece of paper <laughs> this round again and i, I must my question my cards yes. i've got my ipad for a photo yes so we know when the competition starts because we hear a sound like this. And we know when the competition ends at the end of the speed round because we hear a lovely finish to the speed round that goes a little bit like this. Yes, isn't it lovely? Did you enjoy the speed round last time? I know that Kay did. I loved it, I wanted to do another one. I'm going to find out today if I enjoy it. <laughs> I have to say I'm slightly sceptical. I loved it. So look, I think it's time that we play Knit or Forfeit. Are we ready with the first knitting question? Oh my goodness. Yes. Are you all on the edges of your seats? Yes. Okay, question one. Yes. Brioche stitch has risen in popularity over the past few years. How would you describe this kind of stitch? Is this my opinion or...? <laughs> no, it's, it's, I guess it's the... <laughs> When I say, how would you describe, what I mean is... I think I know what you mean. Yeah, what do you need to do? What, what, are the, what are the things involved? What are the stitches involved to create brioche stitch? I think I might be able to hazard a guess at the answer, but I don't think I should go for it without hearing the, okay. the multiple choice answers, just in case... I don't get it quite right. So okay. I will hear the multiple choice answers. Okay, so is it A, a series of increases and decreases that create a textured fabric? B, yarn overs that are knitted together with a slip stitch from the previous row? C, alternating knits and purls? Or D, Knitting into the stitch below on alternate stitches. Oh, it's tricky. Do you think you know? I have a, I have a good idea because I did try this once. Yeah, I know. We, we, did, we both tried it, but it was a long time ago. Yes. So but I, I figured you might not have remembered. Um, I don't remember crystal clear. I remember not liking it. I also remember yes. not liking it. But you know, each to their own. Each to their own. Certain absolutely. techniques. Like anything. I suppose it's like music, you know, some music you like, some yeah. music you don't like, some type of stitches you like, some you don't like. But I really didn't like some this. Some people like spicy food. And then does some, not. And then some people are correct not to like spicy food. <laughs> to be fair, I'm not as spicy as I used to be. Oh, you. Oh. <laughs> I have no comment for that. I, I take that as a positive. <laughs> So, yeah, I think I possibly have an idea what it should be. Okay. The interesting thing is, do I go for it or do I use a lifeline first? I feel like I'm going to use a lifeline. Okay. <laughs> Question one, and he's already into he's the lifeline. He's already using a lifeline. I'm pushing the button, baby. Yes, I will do 50-50. 50-50. So take away two wrong answers, please. The two remaining answers yes. are, yes. is it B, yes. yarn overs that are knitted together with a slip stitch from the previous row, 
or is it D, knitting into the stitch below on alternate stitches? Okay. Can I have uh, the answers just once more? <laughs> is it B, yarn overs that are knitted together with a slip stitch from the previous row? Yes. Or is it D, knitting into the stitch below on alternate stitches? Well, I am going to immediately lock in D. You think it's D? Yes. Dan thinks it's knitting into the stitch below on alternate stitches. <laughs> is it correct? Now this could be a controversial incorrect or correct answer and I'm right. sure people out there might say this is a controversial answer. Why? The correct answer is B. I, I, do you know what? As soon as you said it, I thought it was B. Because you do all of that yarn over... As soon as you brioche, said it... Brioche knit... Brioche and the viewers at home thing. know that I thought it was B because I was sticking a thumbs up when you were saying uh, B and I overthought it. Now the reason this is controversial is because the other answer that Dan went for, which is D, yeah. knitting into the stitch below on alternate stitches, also creates a fabric that looks like brioche. Is but that Fisherman's Rip? It's Fisherman's oh. Rip. Oh! So although those two techniques create effectively the same looking fabric, one of them is a brioche method and one of them is a Fisherman's Rib method. So, and the brioche me method involves the yarn overs and then barking and burping, I don't even know. I'm so sorry. It. No, it's fine. Do you know what that's called? We say it all the time on Knit All Four Go with your gut. Go with your gut. It's, I mean, it was probably a little unkind throwing in the, the D method because, like I said, it creates the same fabric and it's a different The problem is if that way. one hadn't been there, then I just would have said B. Yeah, that's true. So then it would have yeah. been too easy. Yeah, yeah. So look. Just like Kay, I got the first one wrong. That's except, true. except Kay didn't get the first one wrong because I asked the question <laughs> wrong. She got that point back. Okay. Okay. Fear not. It's okay. It's all right because I started out like that, didn't I? And yes. it all ended fine. Yes. So come on. Do not worry. Do not worry. Okay. Bring on question two. Okay, question two is a photo question. This knitwear designer currently has 299 designs on Ravelry. The most favourited design of hers on Ravelry has 43,527 favourites and 5,342 projects and is called Boxy. What is her name? I'm so grateful that you didn't say, <laughs> tell me the name of the project. The, the, <laughs> no, the that would have been really... It wouldn't. I mean, I, I would have got it, I think, but... I well, I know, I know Boxy. Right, okay. Yeah. So, so you, know, you know the designer? Of course I do. Oh, I know exactly You see, is. I shouldn't have gone for that one. Why not? I did wonder. I thought, it, well, he That's knows. not an easy picture. No, the picture's not that. I chose one. Watch we get it wrong now. I, you see, you could answer it without... Yeah. Without the... Oh, she, he knows it. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's my fault for going for boxy. I should have gone for one of the other designs. But what? I just, I just thought... If, I, if I'd given you details of another design... No, I knew just by looking at the photo. Oh, you know who it is? Yeah. Oh, I just in didn't fact, think you fact, would know who it is. If you had said to me, who designed Boxy, I probably wouldn't have been able to answer oh, the question. Oh, right, OK, OK. I know who that is. You know who that is. I do know that, who that is. But to be fair, she's probably one of two designers I could identify. Right, OK. I should, I should have chosen someone else, shouldn't I? So I'm ready to lock in the answer. And get two points. Yes, it's suit. No, it's not. It's Hoey Locatelli. It is. So of course, I'm not going to keep him in suspense. Of course, it's Hoey Locatelli. Everyone knew out there, didn't you, that that was Hoey. Lovely Hoey. She's gorgeous. She is. Hey ho, look, you got two points. Question two. Two points, baby. Yes, and we got Come to on. see lovely Hoey. Yes. So that's always good, isn't it? Okay, are we ready for question three? We most certainly are. Question three, everybody. Okay. Mega knitting is something that has recently become popular. Okay. What is special about the needles that are used for this method? Mega knitting. I mean, I could hazard a guess, 
I don't really know. Well, I don't know what mega knitting is. I can only, I can guess what it probably is. I would guess it's huge knitting. Okay. With massive yarn and massive needles that knits up in like two minutes. So I, I would guess that, that that's what mega knitting is. Okay. But I, I'm, I'm going to hear the multiple choice answer. Okay. So what is special about the needles used for mega knitting? Is it A, hooks are carved into the ends of the needles? Is it B, they are extremely flexible? Is it C, they are extendable? Or is it D, they are always hollow? You would think if it was, if I'm right, if mega knitting is, because I've seen that everywhere, people with huge yarn knitting great big projects. You would think if the needles weren't hollow, they'd weigh a, a bit and be awkward to to manoeuvre, you would think. Just, unless I'm completely wrong and mega knitting isn't big knitting, why would hooks be carved into the end of the needles? I mean, and how would that be knitting if there was hooks on the end of the needles? It can't be A. Well, you wouldn't think so. And B was, they were, no, B was their bendy or something. Extremely flexible. C, extendable. D, always hollow. I'm going to go D. Always hollow. Always hollow. Yes. Final answer? I'm locking it in. Is it correct? Has anybody done mega knitting? Anybody out there know the correct answer? It is not oh. D. What is it? Bizarrely, they have hooks carved into the ends of the What needles. is mega knitting? You are correct. Right. It is the massive, massive needles and right. huge yarn. Right. And the reason that there's hooks carved into the end is because it's it, you is it kind more like of sewing. No, you, it's you. You use like you, you know, your physical hands to pull the stitch over, and it's to help pull it through. Pull it over. Right. Yeah, because the. It because seems completely adverse to what you would want on a need. I certainly wouldn't want hooks on the end of my needles in. No, I mean it's knitting. kind of a bit like Tunisian knitting, isn't it? Because they that that Tunisian knitting is a long needle with a hook on the end. Well, we learn something new every day, don't we? Yes, yes. we do. Rubbish. That's no good. So this next question, I think you will, well, I really hope he will get this. And if he doesn't get this, then I've taught him nothing. <laughs> Are you ready? Well, look, if it's a question about um, uh, stockinette stitch or garter stitch, then we're probably in trouble. Oh, dear. <laughs> we may be in trouble. Question four. If I asked you to knit garter stitch in the round, how would you do this? <laughs> I've clearly taught him nothing. I don't know that you've ever done this actually. So I have to get it in the right in the right order. In the right order. You just have to tell me what you would do to knit garter stitch in the round. Do you need the answers? I'm gonna try and go for it. No way! Yeah. Do you not think this is frivolous? Frivolous. <laughs> is spending, that the right word? spending the <laughs> mortgage money on frivolities. On frivolities. <laughs> Stocking stitch is what people would have worn in their stockings. In their stockings? It'll be called stocking stitch because back in the day... Yes, correct. That will be why it's called have, stocking stitch. Stockings would have been created that's the using... Using that stitch, So correct. for stockings, you would want a lovely flat. So it, it, you wouldn't want it lumpy, would you? No. You know, you can't, you think, can't talk to me. Uh, I can't talk to you, no, I mean... So, so stockings... Lumpy stockings don't sound that appealing. I don't know, I keep feeling my leg, that sounds weird. <laughs> Have you got stockings on under your trousers? Is that what you're trying to tell me? So, your stockings want to be lovely and flat and smooth. So you would knit every round if you were knitting in the round. The garter is the thing that you pull on. Have you got one of those on as well? <laughs> yeah, I love how I'm putting it on <laughs> as I'm talking. It's got stockings and a garter on. So the garter is the thing that you pull on, so it would need to have some stretch to an extent, but with a bit of pull. So it's got to be knit one round and then purl one round. I don't know whether to hear the answers or not. Don't say anything. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to lock it in and I'm going to say knit around and then purl around. Okay. Shall we, shall we hear what the answers were? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so is it A, 
knit every round? Is it B, purl every round? Is it C, knit around and then purl around? Or is it D, knit two rounds and then purl it two isn't. rounds? <laughs> C, locked in. Is he correct? Yes, of course he's oh, correct. Oh. oh, well done. Yes, so what question are we on? Four. And I've got four points. <laughs> he's pulled it back by being brave. I pulled up my stockings. I and he's popped my your garter, garter on. <laughs> yes. And who, everything. Who knew that that's where this was going to go? This is my one weakness: is stocking stitch and garter stitch. Which I, I knew. I've always had a huge problem with. I this. knew that, and that's why I went for it, thinking he's not going to get this one because his we, brain will just explode did, trying to. Think. Yeah, yeah. If you were talking to me about lace, if you were talking to me about cables or colour work or, or double knitting, I'm fine. But when it comes to stocking stitch and garter stitch, I just, I get completely confused. And I think the problem is you'll read about it in places and they talk in the round and also flat. Yeah, and that's it's, diff what, it's different. Yes, isn't it, that's different what confuses me. It, it like, my, my head explodes and I just can't work it out. Yeah. But I got it. You did. Four out of four. Well done. <gasps> What's okay, next? final knitting question. Okay, final knitting question. So right. question five. Right. In 2019, I published an ebook collection called the Swish and Flick Collective. Yes. It consisted of seven patterns plus a bonus eighth, yeah. inspired by the Harry Potter book series. Yeah. It included three pairs of socks, a cowl, okay. a large wrap, a shawl, and a hat. Yes. Which of these patterns was inspired by the final book, The Deathly Hallows? You see, he got all cocky then. Did you see he got all cocky I didn't. and I knew he would. Know. He's like, No, no, they know. I was looking terrified. All right. I was okay. looking away all worried. <laughs> there was no cockiness involved. Right. The cockiness came where I was sticking my thumbs up with the right answer and then I said <laughs> the wrong answer. <laughs> I have learnt. Um, so which of the seven designs because each design is inspired by one of the books so okay let's see how many I can name uh, choose your house socks this should be like a ping when I get one <laughs> no 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 but then people will get confused so there's eight all together because yes there was a bonus eighth pattern can I name them <laughs> choose your house socks shell cove what, what was the question again <laughs> which of the designs was inspired by the deathly hallows Okay. Oh, I think he knows it. Okay, so uh, choose your house socks. Uh, Shell Cove, Pink Sugar. Oh, I don't know. You'll have to give me the answers. Okay, okay. Answers. Okay. 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 So is it A, the Shell Cove socks? Is it B, the Dumbly Shawl? Is it C, the Moon Dust Cow? Oh, why didn't I remember that one? Or is it D, the Twinkle and Dance socks? <sighs> And you have read all of the books. I have. That's why I think it's Shell Cove. Which is A. Is that Shell Cove is... The, I see. I can't remember if they go to Shell Cove. It's got to be. I'm going to say A, Shell Cove, locked in. Okay. A, Shell Cove, is he correct? Yes. You're going to have to wait <laughs> no! to find out. No! What an amazing start. Well, it's not amazing at all. I well, got two wrong, but... But I'm it, still on four. You are. So you are. actually, it's not a, it's not a total disaster. No. And if I've got this one right, then it's five out of five. It is. Even though I got two wrong. <laughs> yeah. So look, you're going to have to tune in later on in the show to find out who wins. Will I retain the crown or will Kay be victorious? Yes. We'll see you later on to discover the answer. Oh my goodness. The tension. The excitement. Yes, I may have got two wrong. But he who dares wins, baby. Yes. <laughs> My uh, goodness, can you believe it? And oh, what a fool. Why did I question myself on question one? I know. Oh, it's just a disaster. And I got an extra point. I know. I know. That's the way. Your first Christmas gift. I know. An extra point in Nizzle I, Forfeit. I hadn't thought about that either when he asked It was in the question. tension and the excitement of the moment. I think technically I did get it wrong because I was answering the question that I thought you were asking. But that doesn't matter. No. Technically, you got it right. Yeah, I because know. Because the question I asked you had two correct answers. That's right. So you got it right. I know. But what I'm saying is, 
if you'd yes. have asked me what but you intended to ask me, I would have got it wrong. Well, yeah, you would have, but no. I didn't ask what no. I intended okay. to ask. Okay, okay, very <laughs> so, much. So your point is moot. Moot. <laughs> I always thought it was mute. <laughs> mute. I did. I also. Where does it come from? A moot point. Yeah. Also, as well, for years. Well, for years, up until I was about fifteen, I didn't say par for the course. Uh, yeah. I said path of the course. <laughs> Path it, of the course, not par for the course. No, it's par as in as in golf. golf. That's I, why I know the what term it means now. Yeah, yeah. Yes. What a complete fool. Well, no, I can understand why you would say that. Well, thank you. I don't understand why I got two questions wrong. <laughs> and will I get this fifth question right? You'll find out when we come back for the exciting conclusion of knit or forfeit. Right now, though, it's time for a bumper. Yes. Very exciting. Kate Jones, what's off your needles? I have got three... Yes, I've got three things, and Dan's got something too. Yes. How exciting. So I'll show, you, I'll show you mine first. So the first thing is... Well, well, you'll show one thing of yours first. Oh, is that how it works? You're not just showing all three of your things. Okay. Right, all right. Let's give some people some variety. All right. It's the spice of life, after all. <laughs> so, <coughs> you made me go off. So the first thing off my needles is a pair of socks. It's my Sockerween socks. That's lovely. I did finish them. Oh, and aren't they lovely? Can you yes. see the two different colours on socks? Yeah. It is yeah, yeah. It is quite obvious. Well, it is and it isn't, I think. Dodgy dye job, that was. Dodgy dye job. <laughs> it was an intentionally dodgy I dye know job, it was. though. So I know. that's fine, isn't it? For those people who don't remember, Kay dyed the yarn. I dyed the yes, yarn. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, this is um, Nocturne Alley. Yeah, so I dyed the yarn and the coordinating orange as well. And I love them. And this is the crunkled. It's my crunkled pattern. But I put in my butterfly heel. This isn't in the crunkled pattern, but it is, as I said before, in the rumple pattern. I know those two sound similar, don't they? I think we've realised where the confusion's coming, Kay. Yes, yes. I, I do apologise for using two words that are kind of a little bit similar, but... It had to be done, yes. you know, they had to be rumple. Um, but anyway, these ones are all finished and they're gorgeous. So these are going to be wrapped up and put into Bryony's Christmas gift pile. Beautiful. So that's those. Show, so, show your cushion actually and then we'll come back to you for a, a final. Okay. So my second finished item is... Mum's cushion is finished. Beautiful. I actually finished this quite soon after the last show. I just ploughed on and I finished it. So I would have normally sent it off, but I've held on to it. I'm going to put it in the post this afternoon. I'm going to get it boxed up and in the post. Um, but here it is, and I love it. Look. <gasps> Look at the cushion. Beautiful. Isn't it lovely? Yeah, it is. It's really nice. So I used my mitered square sort of instructions that are in my stitching time pattern. And I just knit a panel, as you saw last time, that's 50 squares, it's 10 by five. And then I folded that over and then I seamed two of the sides and then I put the cushion inside and then seamed the third one with the cushion inside. And I used a mattress stitch Where's the seam? I mean, that's pretty good if I'm looking for the seamed sides, isn't it? Right, that's the one that's not seamed. So this is a seamed side, and I think it looks it looks pretty good, doesn't it? You know, it did take me a little bit of time to seam it all together, but I didn't, I didn't mind that, really. I quite enjoyed it, because I was finishing it. See, this is why I don't mind sort of seaming and finishing off, because I'm, I've nearly finished the, the item. So I think Mum's going to really like it. It's a lovely fat cushion. Yeah, yeah. And that's going to sit on her sofa. Beautiful. So, Dan Jones. Yes. What's off your needles? Well, Yay. I've realised that the most knitworthy person in the world, so long as you're knitting her socks, is our daughter, Bryony. <laughs> honestly, honestly. She is. You she could is. not find in the world a more knitworthy person than her. If you knit her a nice pair of socks... She will cherish them and she will wear them. She wears hand-knit socks every single day. And she won't neglect yeah. any of them. No. She never neglects any of her socks. No, and she sort of... she's She rotates she's, through. She rotates through them and she associates things with each single pair because she'll know why I've knit that pair or why Dad's... Oh, Dad. Why Dan's knit that pair. 
Well, I am a dad. You are a dad, I know. That's... I don't want anyone to... No, I know. It's well, It's like I was talking to Bryony yes. about you. I always yes. say, you know, dad, obviously, because you are a dad. So, it's the Moss Eccle socks. Oh, they're beautiful. Oh, I love these. They're beautiful. I truly loved every bit of these. The first one, I made some mistakes. I learned some lessons. Got a stern telling off from Kay. And the second one, I rectified all my problems by changing the way that I approach knitting socks. And so, yeah, I mean, both look pretty good, even they the do. one they with, with the, the few mistakes on. Because I really very got They're my yarn really caught obvious. in my bag. Yeah, I mean, it's had not... to cut it, rejoin. That's not a mistake, though, is it? That's just. And then also, hour. you then had to tink. I had oh, to did tink I drop back. back? Did I drop stitches? Oh, I can't remember. I, there was Look. a few things that went Look, on, but it's all fine. It was a bit weird. It all, all, all came out right in the end. Gorgeous yarn dyed by K. Really, just, I mean, the base is just phenomenal. It's that same base, yeah. yeah. And I knitted these with a long leg specifically to go inside her yellow Doc Martens. Yeah. So that'll be great in the winter. And the, this pair, I think, will go into her Christmas stocking. Yes. So she's got a... She's got two pairs of socks coming for Christmas. One in a stocking, one under the tree. Yes. Beautiful. Lovely. So what else is on your needle? Off your needles. Off my needles. So the last thing is the pair of sort of Halloween inspired mitts that I was making for Bryony. I finished those two. I really wanted to get loads of things off the needles ready for December. And I've done really well, you know, getting those three things off as meant I could cast on those things that I've shown you today. So yeah, I finished these as well, and these are just fantastic. Look at that. <gasps> Look! They're really cool. So I did a two by two rib across the top of the, the sock, across the top of the mitt, and then it's just plain underneath. Isn't the yarn lovely? This is from London House Yarns, and it was a 50 gram self-striping, and then a 20 gram mini in the black. Right. And the colourway name I can't remember is something to do with Halloween. Right. And there'll only be this colour. I mean, I don't think she'll have it in her shop now. It tends to be a seasonal thing. But you might have some in your stash. You'll yeah. know if you've got this one in your stash. It's so lovely. Really is. I know. Was it something to do with... Hocus Pocus. Ho it was. It, I think they're Hocus Pocus. And w what did you base the... I used uh, one of what my... recipe? Well, it's one of my many mitt... I've got a few mitt pa patterns out there. There's the dynamite mitts. There's the uh, foxglove cottage mitts. So I've based it on the, that pattern, yeah. but I did adjust the thumb gusset right. to make it a bit shorter because of the self-stripingness going on. I didn't right. want it to disrupt it too much. And I took out, I think, maybe about five rounds out of the, the thumb. And do you know what? It works perfectly. Right. There's no stretchiness or anything. It's just perfect look That's over good. the thumb. That jog, jog you can see is where the increases are being done. And these are just lovely. So these actually are going into Bryony's advent calendar. I've made uh, an advent calendar yeah. this year. These are in day seven, wow. so I can just wrap these up and sneak them into our advent calendar. It's an advent calendar of like stationery and makeup and other lovely bits and pieces. Amazing. So these are going to be um, a present for her in that. And I, I wanted them, I wanted her to have them while she's still in school so that she can wear them to school for a few days before she breaks up. That's good. What amazing project! Yay! I'm so happy to have finished all those things. It's a great feeling, isn't it, getting things finished? Yeah. I love it. And in case anyone noticed, when I went to the hairdressers yesterday, I said, <laughs> just go wild. <laughs> I want something new, you know, something exciting. And that's what she did. I'm not sure how good of a job I've done. It's tremendous. Right, okay. It's absolutely tremendous. I've left it a bit longer on top because I don't... That, you know, this is... Not Dan's fault, but he really liked his hair super, super short. And this emanates from when you had chemotherapy and you didn't have the hair. Um, and it comes, it all comes from that, doesn't it? And the sort of emotions around that. So you've always kept it really short since. But I just, I love him having a bit more hair on top. Yeah. Because Dan's hair, when it grows a bit, it's a gorgeous colour. It's yeah. like a sort of um, strawberry blondish sort of colour. It's really lovely. Yeah, so we, we've, I've just tried to keep it a bit longer on top this time. And as long as it's short around here, really yes. short around here. Oh, sorry, I'm going to poke you in the eye. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. I mean, that's the only thing. I've, 
as long as I'm short, short on the on the back and sides. Short back and sides. You look like you should be in the army kind of thing, don't you? As long as it's short here and here, I'm totally cool. And you know, I said to Kate, I don't really mind how long it gets on the top. I even said I don't care if it even has a great big quiff. <laughs> so long as the sides are short, I'm really, Can I'm totally imagine? fine with it. I just really hate it when bushy sideboards and I, I can't stand the grey that comes out. It just makes me feel all old and. So, you know, I'm sorry, I'm just being, I'm being me. Well, it's know? fine, it's fine, isn't it? it it's very strange, though, that the length of my hair brought out some yeah, memories. Yeah, and I got, yeah. really it was emotional. positive, it was positive. Yeah, yeah. It was all positive, there's nothing negative about it. No. But I could just, and this is perhaps the reason why I've kept my hair short, is it just reminded me of when I lost my hair. Yeah. And, you know, mm. I can remember it. Absolutely vividly. So can I. I was actually on the way to hospital. Uh, I was queuing up to get into the hospital. I did that with my hand and it came out and it was full of hair. Yeah. And we'd spoken about it beforehand. We were ready for this happening. And I, I came home and I said, we'd already agreed we were going to, you know, we were all as a family just going to cut it off and make yeah, it a fun yeah, thing. Yeah. So we got a. The, so we did. We just. We cut it all off. We just shaved it all off. Yeah, that then avoided, and, you know, the weeks of it dropping out. Yeah, yeah. It's, but all those know, emotions it, came flooding back. Yeah, and, I mean, isn't it strange that it's how many years ago would that have been now? Long time, long time. 2014. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think you ever really get over the emotions. I think you just learn to sort of live with them. Well, I think a lot of them are deeply buried and it takes them time to yeah, come out. I mean, yeah. I remember in, in the, the months and the years directly after you know the chemo ended I would I'd be out running and I would just get upset and it was just emotions coming out mm -hmm. and initially I was like this is weird and then I was like do you know what it's fine it's fine it just needs it's to happen it's fine it's better not to bottle things up isn't it because yeah I mean inevitably you do end up bottling certain things up and clearly the hair thing I yeah, bottled up yeah. and then it just came out yesterday and it, it was clearly because my hair had been a bit longer funny yeah, look cool. anyway you want to find out who wins <laughs> Nittle for you do you so do so without further ado let's get back and find out who's going to win I can't wait to see you Nittle forfeit. Oh my goodness. The tension here is like palpable. She won't tell me the answer. Nope. What's the question? So the question was, I'll shorten it. In 2019, I designed a collection called the Swish and Flick Collective, inspired by all of the Harry Potter books. So there were seven patterns and a bonus eighth. Right. So which of those patterns was inspired by the final book, The Deathly Hallows? Okay. So Dan locked in the Shell Cove. I did. Socks. Yes. So was he correct? Yes, he was correct. Woohoo! Well, I can't remember. Well. I did actually work it out while I was thinking of all the patterns. Yeah. That's so cool. Shell I mean, Cove. Yeah, inspired by the, their visit to... Shell Cottage. I'm very grateful for having read the books because had I not done that, I don't think I would have got Yeah. There. No. Well done. Yes. So and that's the end of the knitting questions. And you're on five. Wow. That'll do, pig. That'll do, pig. <laughs> well done. So we're on to now Trivial Pursuit, Come everyone. On. So gather round your husbands, wives, friends, whoever you've got in the room that might be interested in joining in. And let's see what we can do. Yes. So I'm going to start off with a entertainment question, and it's from the old edition. Okay. Okay, so are we ready? Yes. First question. How many seats are there in the TV Batmobile? And this is an old question. It's an old question. So this is the original Batman. Yeah, in the TV Batmobile. Yeah, there's only been one series, isn't there? My... my sort of guess would be two but then Oops. I don't know so I'll hear the, the multiple choice answers you want to hear the yes. answers does anybody out there know I mean to be fair well go okay so is it A one B two C three or D four I'm not convinced there's a back seat and there's definitely a seat for Robin I'm sure there is. The film one's only got one seat. Otherwise, Robin would have to run on next to him. <laughs> Although, I think in the film he had a motorbike. I'm going to go... Was it 2B? B2? Yes. I'm going to go 2. So, B. Does it have two seats? Yes. Locked in. 
Knocked him. Yes. Yes, it does. Yes. Come on. Nice. Yeah. Original series. Oh, yeah, that was so excellent. That's the way. Right. Okay, so we're now doing another entertainment question, but this Sorry. is the newer version. Okay. 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 So, what movie franchise includes installments that chronicle The Revenge of the Fallen and Age of Extinction? Any ideas? Um. I mean, Revenge of the Fallen, Age of Extinction. So, I mean, it could be some sort of apocalyptic Age of Extinction. So is the human race about to be extinguished? I mean, there's all sorts of... I mean, there's all those films that our daughter Bryony loved with the Maze Runner things and... I mean, that would totally fit with that franchise, wouldn't it? It would totally fit with Maze Runner, Revenge of the Fallen... Maze Runner, Age of Extinction, I could totally see that. Doesn't fit quite so much with, like, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> or the Age of Extinction? Maybe it does. But hold on a minute. Because when I was a kid, I used to collect my favourite toys. I really liked Mask. Who remembers Mask? That was cool. That was where you get, like, a lorry that well, no, the lorry was rubbish. It just became a command centre. But there was a jeep that became a speedboat and a bike that became a helicopter that my dog ate and I was very upset. Um, that my, can't be good. He oh, actually ate it. He didn't eat it all. He just chewed it. Oh, I was right. devastated. It was my favourite one. But my other favourite toys, and they were metal, were Transformers. So I'm going to go for this. Without You're going to go for it? Yeah, I am. Oh, my word. Because I remember I used to watch the cartoons... Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen, Transformers, Age of Extinction. It just sounds right. So I'm saying, oh, it's tricky now. Yes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to lock in, because you said what movie franchise? I did. I'm going to say the Transformers movie franchise. Okay. Okay, let's hear the answers, but it's locked hear, in. It's locked in. You want yes. To, so you want to hear the answers. Is it A, Transformers? Is it B... Star Trek? No. Is it C, Jurassic Park? No. Or is it D, Lord of the Rings? It certainly isn't. Of course he's correct. Well, yeah. Without the answer. I'm so mad. Two so points, mad baby. That he works that out. I didn't think you would get that. That's so, amazing. I didn't think you would get that. Can you believe? Well, I haven't seen them. So. Well, no. I, well, it's I only because I collected you. the toys when I was a kid. I'm sure there's something in uh, the so cartoons. So two points. Yes. So now we're on to history. Okay. So history, we're starting off with an old question. Okay. So from 90, whatever it was. Okay. Okay. So for what did the initials B, E, F stand for during both world wars b e f f f f okay oh, look at his face he knows it i cannot believe i've chose questions that he knows i mean this is why we don't play trivial pursuit with him because he's so annoyingly correct all the time i should probably i mean I'm tempted to go for it, but then I'm worried I might get one element of it slightly off. Well, if you're not going to go for it, tell us what you think it is. I think it is the British Expeditionary Force. Okay. But I'll hear the multiple choice answers. Okay. Because I don't. I want to get it right. Okay. So is it a the British Exploration Force? Could be, but it's not. Is it b the British Engineering Force? Definitely not. Is it C, the British Expeditionary Force? Or is it D, the British Examination Force? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Your GCSE is marvellous. <laughs> I'm saying C. Is that right? It is C. C. Yes. British Expeditionary Force. You're sticking with that? I am. Okay. Yes, is yes, he, yes. Is he right for one point because he didn't go for it? Of course he's right. Whoa. Because he's just irritating with things like this. Eight out of eight. Because he knows all of these Come random on. things. I just read a lot. I wouldn't have had a clue. <laughs> Sorry. Annoyingly correct. I tell you what, actually, if you want to read uh, good books about the Second World War, 
Stephen Ambrose's books are really good. He wrote loads. Pegasus Bridge is excellent. And also D-Day. D-Day is a bit long. A bit of a slog. But Pegasus Bridge, highly recommended. If you're thinking of birthday presents for grandsons or husbands or wives who are yeah, into yeah. war stuff. Into World War Two. Pegasus yeah. Bridge, Stephen Ambrose, is a great book. Brilliant. Cool. Okay. So, question nine. Oh, I'm starting to get nervous now because we're getting close to the speed round. I know. I'm worried I'm not going to be good at this. Okay. Question nine. Yes. And so, this is a more modern history question. Okay. What vol... I'll say that again. What volcanic island generated one of the largest volcanic eruptions in recorded history in 1883? I don't know. You don't know, so you, you know. need the answers. I, do, I wish I'd gone for it now on the last one. Oh, go on, yeah, carry on. Give okay, so is it A, Tambora? Is it B, Etna? Is it C, Pinatubo? Or is it D, Krakatoa? See, I did think Krakatoa when you said the question. Didn't they make a film about that? Krakatoa, East of Java, was it called? Or I don't I, know. Am I making that up? But now, I, I, you see, it could be Etna. I don't feel like it's A or... I don't think it's like it's A or C. So, do you... I mean, <clears throat> earlier on, I said you go with your gut. The first thing I thought was Krakatoa. But then Matt Etna's so famous. And is it famous for a reason? Am I just thinking, oh, I see, I'm being pulled. It's like I feel this... this, this Pull towards Etna now. Oh, I'm going to go B, Etna. Are you sure? Yeah, because I've said it, so... Locked in, yes, Etna. Yes, Is it correct? He should have gone with his guts. No! Oh. It's Krakatoa. <sighs> Woe is me. I don't believe it. Krakatoa. <sighs> and that is the... Th I oh, honestly... Well, I love a good volcano film. What is it? What is it with human nature that pulls you so hard? It's like because uh, the same thing happened with that other one. You, you'll remember. Yeah. I was sticking I my you, thumb up. I knew. Yeah, and then you just start doubting yourself, don't you? I think that's what it is. Then you just think, no, I, I want to get this right. So mm. I'm, I'm, and that's it. You overthink it. Overthink right. It. Look, it's the speed round. It's the speed round. Okay, so this is it. It's my turn on the speed round. Kay seems as nervous as I was. I know, I've just got to concentrate <laughs> yes. and just talk as fast as I can. Well, just but then you I didn't helping go as him fast out. as I'm I helping could. him out, aren't I, if I talk No, fast. that's not right, I was doing it. Because I get more questions in. No, I, I honestly was just reading as clearly as I could yeah. and, you know, as swiftly as I could. Yes, so, you know, okay. okay. Okay, are we ready? Yes. Okay, are you ready at home? See how many you can answer, yeah? Okay, yes, 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 Okay, here we go. It's the start of the speed round. What reed did the ancient Egyptians make into a type of paper? Papyrus. Correct. As what is Kublai Khan's capital, Kambaluk, now better known? Timbuktu. Peking. Who is known as father of the House of Commons thanks to his inviting the first commoners to become MPs? First commoners. First commoners. Pass. Where would you find almost 3,000 standing stones at northern France's equivalent of Stonehenge? Oh, pass. How many thousand people are said to have died when the bomb was dropped on Hiroshima? 50. 80. <sighs> Which was the world's largest exporter of goods in 1987? China. West Germany. How many arms has the South African neo-Nazi party swastika-like symbol? Four. Three. Which two years saw Arthur Scargill leading Britain's famous miner strike? 79, 80. 84, 85. Who was Churchill's Deputy Prime Minister during the Second World War? Pass. Clement Attlee. Oh. What luxury commodity established John Jacob Astor's fortune? Can't remember. Pass. Which Prime Minister was in office during most of the suffragette problems? Pass. What was Prime Minister Herbert Henry Asquith's political party? Liberal. Correct. What was the full name of Patty Hearst's kidnappers, the SLA? Don't know. 
What commodity shortage was the single main factor for keeping most of the world's cars off the roads during World War II? Steel. Rubber. Which religious leader and his followers committed what he called an act of revolutionary suicide in 1978? David Grish. Jim Jones. Oh. What a disaster. I think we've successfully established <laughs> the old questions. Are more difficult. They were really difficult. I didn't even understand what I was asking. How I don't many? know how many you got right. I do. Well, how, what was it? Two. Oh dear. And a few passes. <laughs> they were hard, though. I, well, it was my choice. I mean... The thing is, when you get into the realms of like polit- politics from the seventies and eighties, you were only little. That's so. not. That's not history. Well, they were I yellow. Know, they were I, all I, yellow I, questions. I understand that. Well, it, it is. is history, isn't it? It is history. But then you can class any bit of information as history, can't you? If where it happened the, in the past. Where were the Greek questions? Yeah, the Roman I know. questions. There was one Egyptian question. <laughs> you know, the, the Victorian. I, I mean, I just choose chose a chunk of I know, I know, which is exactly what I did. It was just a random oh. chunk. So oh. it's time for the crowning of the victor. Yes, the I won last year. The world has been set to rights, yes. and bizarrely, Dan did better on the knitting questions than he did on Trivial Pursuit, which is bonkers. It's good. <laughs> what? Well, it is, isn't it? It is. Look, here we go. The yes. crown gets passed. I think it needs a bit of a blocking. <laughs> Passed to the new champion of da, 2022. Da, da. Oh, Look at that. It's rather fetching. It's perfect. Look at that. Just desserts, I think. Well, Let me tell you. Crystals. I honestly Genuine thought. plastic. Oh but my look, goodness. A worthy champion. Forget about me. It was my year in 2022. Oh, this I wish, year. I wish it was pink, actually, my crown, but you know. You shall be enjoying the crown. I will. And what I shall, was the forfeit? Uh, well, I think I'm cooking dinner for... Yes. A substantial amount of time. Come on. We'll need to check the first round. <laughs> so, folks, can you believe it? As fast as Nittle Forfeit arrives, it's finished. It's finished for another year. But fear not, because, oh yes, if you think that I won't be back to try and retain my crown in 2023, you're crazy. Because, of course, I will. And rest assured, my speed round will not be history from the ages. <laughs> I shall say it now, it's going to be entertainment from 2014. From the modern. All the way. Or yes. should it be sport? No, 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 no. I'm putting my marker down in the sand. Entertainment all the way, baby. So, folks, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this round of Nittle Forfeit. We yes. did. We absolutely loved it. I knew I'd be rubbish on the speed round. I was too nervous. You were too nervous? I was. I was like, See, I just kind of enjoyed it. I was blanking. Rubbish, rubbish. Ah. But, champion oh yes so exciting so look yes. all that's left for us to do is thank you so much thanks for everyone watching. i hope you enjoyed it i hope you joined in yes and remember the next time when you're in the supermarket and you hear the beep think of the fun that you could be having on <laughs> supermarket sweep <laughs> Kay has made me a hat i've made you my hat do we all remember these hats? <laughs> isn't it's awful, isn't it? But it's so Do you remember in Victorian England, if you were at school and you failed a test, yeah. or if you were naughty, then you were given the dunce's hat and you were sat in the corner. Oh, it's so awful, isn't it? But it was it was so funny when we made this yesterday because um, I put it onto Bryony's head. And I said, oh, I was just laughing my head off. I said, oh, we need to make a grey one. And she'd look like the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. And then, of course, she's like, oh, I really want to dress up as a tin man. And so poor Sorry. old Dan's got his dunce's cap. I mean, what happened? <laughs> what happened? I'm like, oh. I get to wear the crown I mean, of is, glory. It, absolutely you know, tremendous victory for I wonder game. what people would say if I just went out wearing it. Nothing. Do you think they'd say people anything? People would say in, nothing. In this, in Not this after we saw someone. Modern world that we live when in. When we were out filming... The, the the early, I think it was the first day of Baker Bear's advent calendar, we saw a lady walk past in what looked like a feathered headdress. Oh, what was that? She looked it like a like... real sort of... 
punky type leather She did, leather she jacket. did. I mean, she Quite, looked cool. Uh, yeah, very cool. It was like it was a hat, but, but it had like, everywhere. it was like this big and, and it, it had like feathers coming off it. Well, they were up, they were under here too. Yeah, it's it, like, it was, it was the very most bizarre thing. And she was just walking down the street, you know, going about her business. Cool. Yeah, yeah, going about her business. Which See, is what I could I, go about my business wearing a crown. Which is what I have to do now. This is the hat I have to wear permanently now, all year. I mean, you, uh, do not go near 1991 history questions. They were really hard. It was more politics, wasn't it? But it was my choice. Just yeah. like Kay chose uh, her speed round questions. Yeah. And I totally failed in my selection. But you, you, it, it, was a worth, it was a worthy win because I got more questions wrong. I got yeah. more questions right on the two pointers. Yeah, yeah. So that's how I managed to keep up with you. Yes. And then I didn't keep up with you at all in the speed round. No, but you know, it's it's nice to have a change of change of head for the crown. It is. It? it is. Just dessert. I'm going to keep it oh, on. Yes. I'm going to keep it on because it's actually really comfortable. And as fast as needle or forfeit comes around, it's gone. Yes. Like that. Because now is the moment when we can really all start getting ready for Christmas. Yeah. And when we see you next time in our Christmas special, Kay will be here with the most wonderful episode of Kay's Handmade Christmas. Yes. So don't miss that. And let me tell you, folks, the hits just keep on rolling. Because when we hit our first show of 2023, we're not hanging around. Kay's brand new show begins. Yes, yes. On the very first show. Yep. And you're going to love it. You are. Do, do people know yet? They don't, but we'll talk about it next time. Right, OK. Yeah. But our patrons do know. Yeah, yeah, Baker Bear patrons know. You know. But it, it, we'll talk about what's coming up beginning of next year. We will. final show of this will. year, which is yeah. next time. Next Look, time. it's time for the Andy Bits. Andy Bits. Oh, my goodness. So the Baker Bear's Advent Calendar 2022 is officially underway right now. If you would like to join Kay for a very special mystery knit-along, there's still time. There is. And me for lots of adventures. Just follow the link in the show notes. Yeah. Become a Baker Bear patron at Silver, Gold or Platinum, and you'll get access to the full 24 days of the Advent Calendar. Yes. All Baker Bear patrons, though, get access to day one and access to day 24. Yeah. The Rumple Socks, as we've said, are now available. Yes. Which is all very exciting. We're getting ready for the release of our special Christmas issue of Knitability. Indeed. Oh, yes. Lots yes. of wonderful articles. Yes. It's going to be marvellous. Yeah, I've got something really special going into that, and I yes. will tell you what that what that was on the next show. Yes, cool. Yeah. So, folks, unbelievably, that's it. What a show. Wow. It's been wonderful to see you. Oh, I hope you've been doing something festive while you watched. And now is the time too, you know, if you're one of the people who doesn't like to sort of lean in to the festive spirit until December. It's December now. It's December. So You're get, allowed. Get the Hallmark ch channel. <laughs> get the Hallmark channel on. Two turtle doves. We oh, recommended that to our Baker Bear patrons. Yeah, we did, we and did. we've been having messages from them oh, who've been watching it and right. saying that they already think it's in their top five <laughs> Hallmark Christmas yes, films of all time. Yes. yes. Actually, if you want to see a good Christmas oh. film... Go watch Spirited. We watch Spirited. It's on Apple TV. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. There is a chance it might be in my top five films of all time. It's so fantastic. You've got to, you know, if you've got access to Apple Apple TV, go watch it. It's amazing. It is utterly yeah. tremendous. Joyous. Yes. Yeah. So folks, thank you so much for watching. Yes. And we'll see you. you in two weeks for our Christmas special. Yay, see you soon. Bye. Bye. Not quitting for men and cable bakery pairs. They'll take you to fabulous places of which their favorites they'll share. You better buy a pad and get yourself a bakery pair. You'll find yourself in a castle while watching the bakery pairs. It never feels like a hassle to sit and watch the bakery. Sign your shelf for once in.